Good morning, dear friend. I'd like to welcome you to the Sunday morning broadcast from the Mountain View Independent Baptist Church. As preacher Bobby want to say thank you for tuning in. Pray that God, uh, you woke up this morning and God has blessed you richly. He's blessed us with another day, another opportunity to serve him. I want to say a big thank you to my dear friend Jim Freeman and WLF radio station and the entire staff down there and thank them so much for everything that they do bringing the gospel to this county and church services from your home church going to be back in the book of mark chapter 9 again this week so if you want to turn your bibles there to follow along we'll take just a minute to invite you out to our church service we're located on myers lane right behind food line just turn down that road at the new traffic light and uh, you can see the church right in front of you sunday schools at 10 Sunday morning on worship services at 11, evenings at 6 p.m., Sunday night, Wednesday night at 7 p.m. I'm still in the book of Revelation, chapter 15 this week. And if you don't have a home church, we'd love for you to come to be a part of our church. In Mark chapter 9, verses 19, we've got a problem with a father. His son is demon-possessed with a very strong demon. He's deaf. He's mute. He can't hear. He can't speak. And he's had this demon since he was just a small child. And his dad took him to the disciples. They couldn't help him. And now he's before Jesus. And the words bring him unto me is the words that rung out into my mind and my heart. And it doesn't matter what kind of a problem you have, what form it takes, you can bring it to Jesus. Mark chapter 9, verse 19. He answered him and said, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. Father God, as we bow before you, Lord, we thank you so much for yet this gift of another day for the opportunity to be in your house god we thank you for wlaf the radio station for everything that they do lord we thank you for the church most most of all we thank you jesus for our salvation we ask god that you would ever keep safe all of our first responders and their families for our police the firefighters our rescue squad our military God, that we always pray that you would just convict America that we would turn back to you and not continue down this path of destruction and wickedness. Lord, we pray for the power of God upon this message. We pray that you would search out hearts this day. God, and there's a special uh, prayer request that'll go unnamed on a man that's lost, needs salvation. He's elderly, he's sick, he's cancer, got many diseases and he just needs salvation pray that you'd help me pray that he would receive it before it's too late we pray god that you would just bless this opportunity that you would bless this broadcast and that we see someone who's lost would get saved this day we love you we thank you giving you the praise the honor the glory for it all in christ jesus precious holy and saving and healing name we do pray and amen let's look at this boy for just a minute if we could now, the Word of God said that he was deaf and dumb, which simply means he cannot hear. You think about something. This boy could not hear a word that was being spoken. He couldn't hear his daddy say that I love you. He couldn't hear his, anybody ask him a question that he could answer. He could see their lips move. He would know that they were talking, but he couldn't hear any of the words. But not only could he not hear any type of encouragement, any questions being asked, anything that could be said that would help him, he could know he could not even communicate. He had no voice. Here's one of the ways that the devil likes to work. He wants to take your voice. He doesn't want you to express yourself. He doesn't want you to pray to holy God. He doesn't want you to carry on a conversation where you might could get some help. The only voice that that boy could hear in his mind was the voice of the demon inside of him. And you've got to understand, he couldn't get any kind of encouragement. He couldn't get any kind of advice. 
He couldn't get any type of help. He couldn't hear a prayer being prayed for his, for his uh, help. He couldn't hear the name of Jesus. And he had no communication. You see, the devil finds different ways to try to take your voice from you. But he also wants to take any type of communication. He doesn't want you to hear the Word of God. He doesn't want you to hear the preacher preach. He doesn't want you to hear any advice or any thing coming to you from someone that cares and loves you. He, he simply wants to be the only voice that you hear in your mind, in your heart, in your head. This boy could only hear the demon speaking, and he could tell that voice. You see, and the devil does that. In this case, he does that through a demon possession. A demon had been dispatched and sent to this boy to completely control him. But the devil does it in different ways. He can get you hooked on drugs. And when you get hooked on these mind-altering drugs and these strong drugs, whether it be meth or coke or whatever form that it takes, you're no longer communicating with your son or your daughter or your brother or anybody else. You're communicating with the drugs. The drugs has a mind and control of its own. You're no longer getting any kind of sense. You're no longer getting any kind of discernment. You're no longer being able to talk to that person anymore. The drugs control their thinking. The drugs control their communication. The drugs control controls everything about it just in the same form that this demon controlled this boy. Nobody could talk to him. Nobody could communicate with him. Nobody could give him any type of reasoning to help, any type of advice, any way to help him, encourage him, or nothing. And the devil finds different ways to take your voice away from you so that you can't communicate what... Really, see, this boy, just let's just say he, he wanted to be cured of this. Just say he wanted a relationship with his dad. Just say he wanted to hear, go hear Jesus preach. The demon inside of him wouldn't allow him to communicate anything to him. And whatever his deep desires was, whatever it was that he would like to see change in his life, to get help in his life, he could not do that because he couldn't have a voice anymore. And you see, sometimes the devil finds a way to take your voice from with drugs, with alcohol, with bad decisions, and with hate. Sometimes the devil can just fill you or someone you love with hate and they'll listen to nothing about Jesus, nothing from the Bible, nothing that the preacher of the church says, and hate controls them. Hate will cause them to not listen to anything that's godly. Hate will only cause them to lash out with the hatred that burns inside of them. And so this boy was being completely controlled. His daddy had no control over him. He just tried to keep him alive and as safe as he could. His daddy could only watch him and just pick up the pieces, if you will. This boy couldn't hear anything his daddy said. He couldn't talk to his daddy. couldn't communicate with him. And... After a while, when you no longer hear the voice of reason, the voice of God, the voice that comes from the words of the Bible, you don't have a passion or desire for it anymore. And those voices become foreign to you. Let me just illustrate with this. Adam and Eve in the garden loved the voice of God when God would come down in the cool of the evening. But once they got sin in their life, they feared the voice of God. You see, that's how the devil turns it around. He gets you listening to his voice, and all of a sudden you don't listen to the voice of God in a manner that you once did. They would hide from God. They never did that until they heard the voice of the devil. And every time God spoke, instead of hearing his voice that would draw them to God, it ran the other way. It drew them away from God because they had to go through the voice of the devil to hear any other voices. He couldn't tell his daddy what was wrong. He couldn't tell his daddy, I've got this demon. He couldn't tell his daddy, I feel bad. He couldn't tell his daddy, I'm afraid. He couldn't communicate what he was feeling on the inside. So if you can't tell someone what you're feeling, if you can't tell someone what's wrong, 
it's hard to get any kind of help. So his daddy was limited on what he could do. But I still uh, broke the words that Jesus spoke in verse 19, bring him unto me. You see, that right there is what he could hear God speak to him. And once his daddy brought him to Jesus, God, Jesus can speak through all that, and the devil can't stop Jesus from speaking. Because what happened was the devil took away his ability to communicate. And when he does that, then the devil does all the communicating. He did those with this boy through that demon. And what he did was the boy couldn't, couldn't say, I, I want Jesus. He couldn't say, I want to be saved. He couldn't say, I need you to pray for me. He couldn't say any of these things. He took his voice away from him. But here's the wonderful thing about this. No matter what that situation is, no matter if it's controlled by drugs, if it's controlled by alcohol, if it's controlled by some problem in someone's mind, some type of a disability, some type of a mental incapacitation, you understand God can speak through all that. God understands when a person cannot speak, if they've got something wrong, God understands their thoughts. God understands those words. God understands what they need. He looks into the mind. He looks into the heart. And God can understand what a person needs. Sometimes we don't even have the right words when we pray. We can be so distraught. But God understands and knows what we need. And God can speak through all that. And they can hear the voice of God. And they can hear what God has to say. God just goes right through that storm that's on the inside. He can hear everyone. He can speak to everyone. But... The thing I want to get across to you today is this. Even when they cannot or will not listen to the voice of anybody, sometimes our kids quit listening to the voice of their parents. Sometimes they quit listening to the voice of their siblings. Sometimes they quit listening to the voice of authority. But they can still hear the voice of Almighty God. They can still hear that still, small voice because God don't have to scream at you. God doesn't have to yell. He doesn't have to speak above or louder than the storm that's going on internally. God can just speak with that still, small voice and He can get to your mind. He can get to your heart. And when they don't hear us, they will hear the voice of God. Whether they obey the voice of God or not, that's different but they can hear, and God speaks. You can go to any facility, whether it be a mental institution, whether it be anything, and where the people, it seems like they don't communicate, God can still communicate. He can still talk to them. He can still listen to them. You see, in this situation with this, little, with this boy, Satan controlled his tongue, and Satan controlled his ears. Satan controlled his communication. But God is about to get through all that when he says, bring him to me. I like the fact of it is that Jesus never one time said, I can't help him. Jesus never one time said, I'm too busy. He never said, I just can't do nothing for him. You're going to get turned down by some of the best experts in the medical field, in in the mental field, and those who, who communicate in different areas of our, of our life, in different parts of medicine, we've done all we can do. The medicine's not working. There's nothing else that can be done. You never hear Jesus say that. When it's too much for everyone else, when the experts can't get through, when the experts have done all they can do, Jesus never fails. He never falls short. But why is it? is that with humanity, especially here in the United States, they'll, people will try every area, every avenue, except for Jesus. Whatever happened to trust in God enough that you can bring your problems to church, you can bring your problems to God in prayer, you can bring his, your problems 
to your church family and we gather around and we all pray through the prayer of faith. When everybody else fails, everybody else can tell you they can't. We've done all we can do. There's nothing else that can be done. Jesus goes all the way. Jesus said, he said, bring him to me. We bring our problems to everything and everybody in this world except Jesus. But may I remind you, before we had the experts, before we had all this training, before we had all these learned people, people had no option except Jesus. And if Jesus could work and be the answer then, just look at in the Gospels, just look at the ministry of Jesus. Those people didn't, very few people ever had access to a doctor. But they all had access to Jesus. He healed every manner of disease there was. Physical, emotional, mental, whatever it was. He cast out demons. He healed blindness. He healed lameness. He could heal leprosy. You see, Jesus is the same Jesus you read about in the Gospels. And whatever he did in Israel and his public ministry, he can still do today. But we take him here and we take him there. Now, granted, his dad didn't know anything else to do to take him, but to take his son to his disciples. But at that point in time, his disciples weren't qualified. But here's the bigger picture. And I'm going to get just a little bit ahead of myself. You see, there was a bigger problem Jesus was dealing with than just a demon-possessed boy. He had a father and a son that had weak faith but he also had a father and son that needed salvation so you see it was all a plan of jesus that if he'd have went through the disciples all they would have got would have just been the demon cast out <coughs> but by taking him to jesus and by his disciples failing they got salvation and faith but that's for another time and we'll take care of that hopefully next week <coughs> but i want to get this this thought to you this morning Sometimes your first hope fails. Sometimes your first attempt doesn't work. Sometimes just bowing in prayer, you still got the problem. It still exists. So what do you do? Do you give up? Absolutely not. Sometimes God wants us to come back and pray about the same thing because there could be an issue going on that we're not aware of that we're not aware of or that we're not bringing to the Lord that God wants to help us with. This daddy, him and his son, had some faith, but they didn't have the faith that they needed. They had unbelief. But they also needed the salvation. Now, I've got to ask you, what good would it have done them eternally to have a demon cast out, but not have the salvation that they could live in heaven eternally. You see, God was looking out for their best interest. He was giving them the bigger picture. He was answering prayers that they had not yet prayed about. They needed the salvation, but they were so caught up in the fact of what this boy was going through and what he was putting his daddy through with this demon they couldn't concentrate on anything else. Their mind couldn't go to nothing else. Sometimes we can get so caught up with one particular problem, we don't notice that there's other problems that need to be taken care of. We're only focused on the one. The one hadn't got answered yet. The one hadn't prayer, the prayer, the prayer hadn't got answered yet. That one is still existing. It controls my thought. It controls how I, my, how I live. But what we need to understand, there's more going on than just the one thing that we've got on our mind that we're concerned with. This boy did have a big problem. Number one, he couldn't talk. Number two, he couldn't hear. Number three, he had a very strong demon controlling him, and that's what consumed the dad's prayers. That's what consumed the dad's daily life, every waking moment. He didn't even take the time or have the opportunity I guess he was so consumed by what he was dealing with on a daily basis he didn't even he didn't even realize he had more problems than just that sometimes we got to take a step back and just bring it to Jesus but not just the one problem Bring all the problem to Jesus and say, God whatever's going on that I don't know about whatever I'm not aware of 
Lord, can you, can you just take charge of the whole situation? Because what will it do if you fix one problem, but another one shows up right behind it? You see, when Hebrews said, bring him unto me, God was going to fix that demon problem. God was going to fix the fact that he couldn't hear. He's going to fix the fact that he couldn't speak. But he was going to fix the fact that he was going to put belief and strong faith and salvation as well. He hadn't prayed about the salvation. He hadn't brought that problem to the disciples. He hadn't brought the unbelief to the disciples. He put everything, the fact is, he can't hear, he can't speak, he's got a demon. That's the only problem that the daddy brought. And all the while, God said, you got more that, that we need to deal with. Sometimes we get so consumed about just the one thing. We don't think about the bigger picture and what else that we need to be praying about. You see, sometimes the first hope, the first attempt fails because there's something else that we need to be bringing before God that we're not bringing before Him, and He wants us to be aware of it. Sometimes we've got to take a step back and not look at it as, as a failure and give up, but look as that there's more that we need to pray about. Sometimes God wants us to bring an entire church together, that we all, the church family, gather around that one, that problem, that we gather around that one need that needs to be met. Sometimes God wants to unite an entire family. Sometimes the family is apart somewhere or another. Sometimes the family is just not close, and God wants to bring the family closer together. Sometimes he wants the church to unite about a situation. Sometimes he just he just wants the the church to come together and the families come together and people to come together because the only hope that we all have on no matter what the situation no matter what the reason no matter what we got bothering us is Jesus and if what our problem is, we bring it to Jesus, and that problem and Jesus unites everybody because what did he do? Number one, the disciples, they were all scattered. We tried, we tried, we tried. He had three disciples on the mountain. They weren't a part of this. He had the rest of them down in the valley. They couldn't cast the demon out. People were losing hope in Jesus because of the failure of the disciples. So what, what he did is that he was training his disciples. He was teaching them a lesson about faith, about prayer. And he was trying to unite the people together and bring everybody together at one time and show them what faith is. He did not want his disciples to be associated with a faithless generation. So God brought that boy by bringing that boy to him. God united all the disciples. He united the people he brought together because the truth of it is, dear friend, much of America is losing faith in Jesus. They're losing faith in the church. They're losing faith in the Bible. They're losing faith in the man of God that's preaching the word of God. They're just losing faith in Christianity altogether because of failures, whether it be lack of faith, whether it be a, a preacher that's not fully committed to God, whether it be someone that's been caught in an indiscretion or a sin, whether it be the fact there's just a falling away of the faith. America is losing faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, and it's because of different failures throughout God's people. And so God very wisely, Jesus, he's uniting all his disciples with the people and he's going to take care of this little boy and his daddy, but he's going to do more than what they're even requesting. It started with a demon problem, but God's about to fix their family. He's going to unite a father and a son. He's going to unite his disciples and he's going to put faith back in Jesus Christ with the people. Because once people lose confidence in you, once they lose confidence in a preacher, when they lose confidence in their church, when they lose confidence in Christianity and the Lord Jesus Christ, it's terribly hard to ever get it back. So God wants us to be careful. Because here is the thing. Little faith 
turns into little hope. When everything in your life, when everything in America, when everything in the world fails, when faith fails, hope is gone. And so much of the time, people have lost hope. They've given up. They've quit praying. They've quit attending church. They've quit studying their Bible. And sadly, so many have quit believing that God's still able. People are treating, and the truth of it is, and and I want to say this as best as I know how to say it, Sometimes when man, representing God, falls short, sometimes when we can't do what's asked of us, sometimes when the prayer doesn't get answered, sometimes when somebody lets you down, people give up hope in Jesus. Jesus never fails. Jesus never lets us down. Jesus never fails to come through for us. He doesn't always do things in the manner we think he should, but he's always looking out for us. Jesus could have very well just did exactly what this daddy asked. Just cast the demon out and we'll be on our way. But God was looking out for that family. And God was about to bring both of them with great faith. He was about to unite them. You see, when you, a father and a son, when the parents walked with Jesus together... When the children walk with Jesus with their parents, when the whole family walks together, God will unite that family. It'll make you stronger. It gives you hope. And when you look upon these things that seem so impossible to fix, that the problem is too big, there's no solution, there's no fixing this, when your faith is stronger, your hope is stronger. Because you see, where someone in mankind may have failed you, Jesus does not. You just got to have faith, and faith gives you hope that God is going to come through. God is going to fix this. God is looking out for stuff you don't even know that you need help with. A lot of families are falling apart over one big thing. And God all the time is just trying to fix more than just the one thing. I mean, I like the fact of it is that Jesus says, bring him unto me. You know what he's saying? He didn't say send him. The key words is, dear friend, he wanted the daddy to bring his boy to him and come to him together. That's where you build family unity and a family bond is when the family comes with the problem together, united, they all come to Jesus. He could have said, just send the boy here, and the daddy could have just sent him. But he said, bring him. I want to see both of you together. He wanted both of them to be saved. He wanted both of them to come to him in faith. He wanted both of them to bring their problem together so that they both could be healed together. You see, they both had a problem. One had a demon, but they both had a lack of faith. One had a demon, but the other one needed needed salvation, but he needed them to be saved together because if they're saved together number one they saw what jesus could do for them and they were able to walk together in faith after that you ever felt alone you ever been in a crowd you ever sat in your church service and it looked like everything was just right with everybody else but somehow there was a void in your own life Imagine how that daddy felt. There's a whole multitude and a crowd of people, and people were getting healed. People were were coming to them, and so did he. But whenever all the others around him were getting their prayers answered, he still wasn't. You see, sometimes it seems like the devil can separate you and put you in the middle of a crowd, but you still feel all alone. That's just the devil. God said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. God said, I'll never leave you alone. I'm the friend that sticks closer than a brother. You're never alone as long as you've got God. Don't let him separate you. 
unite the family. We need to get back to families praying together and families worshiping together and families serving God together and families uniting around one another in the name of Jesus. I want to thank you so much for listening. My time has come and gone. But the key of what I've been preaching in this message and the next message is bring him unto me. Go to God together. Don't just send a problem to God. Just bring the whole family together and God bless all of you. God bless you.